Hey! Welcome back to the vlog. I'm camping here with the family. So we're in Nasugbu, Batangas. It's been our fourth day. We're going home today. It's been really, really great. There's different kinds of camping that you can do, right? There's, uh, my wife and I have done, uh, I think we've done all of them, yeah. So there's hiking, camping, where you, you climb or you go somewhere. Everything that you want to bring, you got to carry yourself or, or at least get a porter. And that's when you're like very minimalist, right? The tent has to be the lightest. Your beddings need to be the lightest. You're carrying it yourself. And then there's car camping, which is you drive there park and then you camp wherever you can park by the beach side of a mountain that's much easier because now you can bring whatever fits in your car you can do that car camping and then there's glamping which is can be kind of combined with car camping in that when you get to the campsite there's things prepared for you there okay and which is kind of what we're doing here as well there's a facility there's this ito yung kubo the that we, we're not sleeping here, but we can get rest here during uh, lunchtime, you know, the peak noon hour. So there's a lot of stuff here. And you know, when you're camping, camping is an exercise on finding what's essential and what isn't. You know, what do I need to bring and what do I not need to bring? That's all it's about. So some of the stuff that I put down here that are essential. Shelter, obviously. You take it for granted until you're outside and then you realize you need shelter from the sun, you need shelter from bugs, you need shelter from the rain in case it rains. Water, super crucial. Clean supply of drinking water is very important. Fire, for preparing your meals, unless you want to eat everything cold. Well, you know, maybe maybe that's not an essential for some people. Having lights to walk around in at night, unless you just want to stumble around at night or be lying down and going to bed at night. Food, obviously, is essential. And then some things are not essential, but they're nice. They're great to have with you, right? Air mattresses. So we, we, we brought air mattresses. We probably wouldn't bring these if we were hiking, but because it's the car and they're, they're heavy, but they fit. And so we've got that. Kids are sleeping better. We're sleeping better. Uh, a non-stick frying pan. <laughs> our camping pans uh, are, are not non-stick. So I'm so glad we brought our non-stick frying pan. It's been made food prep much easier. This campsite, it has a sink for washing dirty dishes with a trash can next to it so you can throw away your stuff. That's super duper helpful. That is not essential in camping, but um, it, it really helps us. Plumbing, they have a toilet that flushes, has running water, and a bidet. My gosh. Diba? This is Harvest Hills pala in Asugbu, Batangas. I think you'd love it if you were camping and you had a bidet, right? They also have cooked food services. You gotta tell them in advance. But if you tell them in advance and then they can prepare the food for you. It's been great for us because we've been hiking a lot. And so we hike, we get back at 6.30, 7. And, you know, if we didn't have this, we would have to be cooking after hiking. And then eating only after that. But now, we get back from the hike, we're hungry. And the food's ready. Tinola, barbecue, liempo, perfect. And finally, not an essential, but really nice to have, charging station. There's no Wi-Fi, but uh, there's signal for data. And so you can kind of watch a YouTube video, especially if the resolution's not that high. And you, there's a charging station. So that has been amazing for us. And all of that intro got me thinking about life. Us getting stressed over stuff, us worrying about different kinds of stuff, and really what really is essential and what isn't. And just like how camping is an exercise in drilling down to the essentials. What do I need? What do I not need? What's crucial? What's not crucial? What is nice to have? What is critical to have? Life is like that as well. And I think uh, being in the pandemic or even not being in changing seasons causes us to ask and to question what is essential and what isn't. And some points I want to make here. Number one, we must always remember our first principles. First heard about this from my brother, uh, David. I don't know where he got it. Maybe from Elon Musk from this quote. And uh, in quoting this, I'm not endorsing his lifestyle i know he can be a controversial figure to some people okay i relocated because the sun and the wind were really difficult where i was but anyway let me read this quote again and i like this quote because um it gets to what i'm trying to say here i think it's important to reason from first principles rather than by analogy the normal way we conduct our lives is we reason by analogy with analogy we're doing this because it's like something else that was done or it is like what other people are doing. With first principles, you boil things down to the most fundamental truths and then reason up from there. That's a great point. And what he's saying there is, what is essential? Of all the things that we're thinking about, we're worried about, we're trying to do, we're trying to imitate, 
is this essential? We must find that first principle, grab it and not lose sight of it. We sometimes get confused. We, we pursue things because other people are doing them. Uh, someone told us to do it or it was a good idea to do before, but that was a different context. And now we got to think about, is that still a good idea to do? This, an, a similar quote to this is the one that I used in the critical versus cynical uh, vlog, if you want to go back to that, where uh, we use that C.S. Lewis quote where he says, the thing that you cannot see through anymore, everything else you can see through at a certain level, but eventually you can't see through something, that is your first principle. That's what Jesus did all the time. He was talking in a culture of people who had so many things that they were supposed to know, they were supposed to do, they were supposed to memorize. And he was talking to them saying, hey, you're getting confused. Let's go back to the first principle of this. He didn't use those exact words, but that's what he meant. Remember in the Sermon on the Mount, right? In Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, he talks about uh, murder. You know, okay, the law says don't murder, but the first principle there, the most important part there is don't be angry and hate your brother. That's more important, right? It's not that oh, I didn't murder you yet. Yeah, but you've slandered, you've, you've backbitten, you've cut off relationship you're already violating the first principle. He said, you've heard it said, don't commit adultery. Yeah, but the, the principle there is don't lust, you know? Because if, if it's only about adultery, then you get people, well, I did not have sex with that woman. Yeah, but what's your definition? But the heart has already violated it. We're going back to the original intent. In Matthew 19, he was asked a question about divorce. And, and they said, uh, is it okay to divorce, you know, your spouse for any or any, for whatever reason? And he says, 19, Matthew 19, 4 to 6, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become flesh, one, one flesh. So they, they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. What's he doing there? He's bringing it back to first principles. He's saying, this is what it's about. That is the point. And my point in saying this is, are we still in line with our first principles? What is this all about? Or are we getting confused? Are we trying to pursue things the way we used to do it before without realizing that I'm not really following the first principle anymore. I've missed the point of what this is about. Second point I wanna make is there's nothing wrong with additions as long as they come from the first principles. Or more importantly, that they support the first principles. Or really, as long as they don't contradict the first principles. What do I mean? Some things are essential, and that's great. And we've talked about that. Like in camping, right? This tent, this is essential. We need this tent. Some things are not essential, and they're nice. Like this ground mat. This ground mat makes it comfortable to sleep, you know, on the ground. We put the sleeping bag on top of this, and it's, it's much more comfortable. This is essential. This is a nice addition. This is fine as long as I don't have to contradict this. Now, if I have to choose between fitting in the car a tent or a ground mat, sorry, I don't need the ground mat. I need the tent. That's what's more important. See, the thing that stresses us out very often in life when we talk with people, sometimes they're not the first principles. They're additions. We're getting stuck with things that aren't critical. I was getting that way with our marriage, you know, so I heard growing up this great idea that if you really love your spouse and you really prioritize your marriage, then you should date once a week. That's not an essential though. That's just a great idea. The first principle is be devoted to your spouse, love your spouse, prioritize your spouse. But what I was doing was I was getting hung up on the idea, on the practice that wasn't the first principle. And so I was saying, oh, oh, why are we not dating every week? Do I not prioritize you enough? Do you not prioritize me enough? And we were getting into arguments over this thing. When it was a simple matter of, she's busy, I'm busy, we've got kids, you know? And what my wife wanted more in terms of devotion was not forcing or, or, or being coerced into a date, but it was into us prioritizing each other, speaking gently, being kind, having time together. So now we don't date once a week. We'll date when we can, we'll run errands together, but really what matters more is that she knows I'm devoted to her and I know she's devoted to me. Additions are great, but they should never contradict the first principle. My wanting to date was causing me to become grumpy and stressed. It was actually undermining the first principle of being devoted to your spouse. See, Jesus was always challenging this. Whenever people would give him rules and regulations, he would say, wait, what is this for? 
What's this going back to in Mark 2, 27? They said, why don't you keep the Sabbath? And he gives this, you know, which is one of the many encounters he had about the Sabbath, about the day of rest. And he says, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man, meaning himself, is Lord even of the Sabbath. He's saying, let's go back to the first principle of this. This is supposed to be about rest and honoring my Father through that rest. This wasn't about, you know, all of these rules where you're only supposed to take X number of steps or carry this X number of things. You're missing the point. Additions are great, but only if they don't contradict the first principle. Let's try applying this in a few things in life. Schooling. I talk to so many young people who are pressured to finish school at the same pace that they would have if there wasn't a pandemic. Why? Where's that from? What is school for? And baka dun pa lang napatigil na tayo. Eh. Ano, ano ba talaga? <laughs> Para sa nanay, tatay ko lang naman to. Eh, di ba buti? Di, alam mo kung ba't mo ginagawa. Pero kung sinabi nila na pwedeng tumigil, eh, di tumigil ka. What's the point of this? Let's go back to that. Dating. Sometimes I get questions like, Pastor, what if someone wants to date me but I don't want to date them? Um... Then don't, right? <laughs> First principles. Why? Why is and 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 then they're going to that way of analogy that Elon Musk talked about. Like other people are doing this, but this was how it was done before. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to date them? Yes or no? Start with that. Quiet time. Ah, yeah. Lots of questions about that. I used to be able to read four chapters a day every day, six a.m. without fail. Now I'm not as consistent. I love it if you can do that. I love it if you're following a devotional plan. I love it if you're doing all of these things. But honestly, those things are additions. The essential thing is to meditate on God's Word. The essential thing is to pray without ceasing. The essential thing is to connect to our Heavenly Father and remember who He is and what He's doing in our lives and to trust Him with that. So if you can't do the additions, that's fine. Start with the first principles. It's like working out. It's like going to the gym, right? Some people belong to a gym. They have a gym membership, a personal trainer. Some people have a personal trainer and a lot of fancy equipment at home. Some people follow online exercise plans. Some people run ultra marathons, ride bikes for long distances up mountains. Those are all great. But if you can't do any of those things, what is the first principle of exercise? It's very simple. Get your heart rate up. Get your heart rate up regularly throughout the week. That way your heart stays healthy. And secondly, you need muscles for your body as you get older and as you go about life. That's it. Forget the 8-pack. You can forget about all the other fancy equipment as long as your heart rate goes up and you're developing the muscles you need for life. Same thing with quiet time. Same thing with marriage. Same thing with work, with walk with God. Go back to the first principles. What is this about anyway? That's what we like about camping. Makes me think, makes me go back and think, okay, what, what do I really need back? What, what do I not need? You think about all the stuff that's in our kitchen. And now that we're out camping, it's like, I need a knife, I need a chopping board, I need a stove burner, that's it. You don't need that much pala. I've got my family here. We're good. Number one, we must always remember our first principles. Secondly, there's nothing wrong with the additions as long as they support and don't contradict our first principles. final thing, point I want to make about first principles is that the firstest principle, the most important first principle, is Jesus. We don't need to know everything. We don't need to master everything. We don't need to be the best at everything. We just need to know Jesus. He's the first principle of all. He's not even, the first principle is a person. <laughs> John 1, 1 to 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. It's a lot to unpack in that short description that John has of Jesus. But for our purposes today in this vlog, it's as simple as He was the first. <laughs> he is the first principle. And not just that, everything that we are stressed about, that we want, schooling, dating, fitness, money, career, end of the pandemic, spirituality, quiet time, all of these things, are all derived from Him. The thing you want the most, that I want the most, comes from Him. If we know Him, either we get that thing or we realize it's not as important because we got the first test principle of all. It reminds me of that uh, legend, that myth of uh, the Gordian knot. I love that. 
and the Gordian knot is the account of uh, a knot that was tied by the wisest man in the world. You know, I don't know how they had rankings for those things, but he was the, one of the wisest men in, in that time. And uh, this knot was supposed to be so intricate, so curled into one another that it was impossible to find the ends. If you find the ends, then you will be the conqueror or the ruler of the world. So Alexander the Great, in his epic drive from Macedonia to India, stops by this temple or whatever where the Gordian knot was held and he heard the legend and the legend says that whoever can undo this knot, can produce the ends of the knot, will rule all of the world. And so Alexander looks at it and he, he gives it a, a, a quick, quick summary. He doesn't understand anything about it. He takes out his sword and then he slices through the Gordian knot. <sighs> to the gasp of the people who had been caretakers of the knot. And then he produces the ends and he says, I guess I'm, I'm gonna rule the world now, right? People thought they had to untie it to produce the ends. Alexander just cut it and that's how he produced the ends. And uh, that's become an expression that, you know, the way to, un to, to solve a difficult problem is to slice through the Gordian knot. I think about this idea we're talking about and Jesus is that solution to the Gordian knot problem. We're in this world that's so intricate and so into one another now, we can't even know where to begin, where to start and where it ends. Like, there's so much opinion on social media, so many things we should be doing, so much life we can compare to other people. And the solution, the slicing through, is who is Jesus? And what is he saying? If everything we can master about life, even the Bible, it goes down to knowing Jesus. That's what Jesus said in John, 5, 39 to 40. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. The point of the Bible, of the whole thing, of everything you can memorize about it, is Jesus. He is the first test, first principle. So if we want to boil down to first principles today, whatever situation we're in, then let's ask ourselves, who is Jesus in your life? What did he say? What did he instruct us to do? Manu, you need help? He needs help carrying a bowl full of cereal and milk. Who is Jesus in your life? What did he say? Do you know his word? That he loves you? That he cares for you? That he has a plan for you? That he's not concerned about what we do for him as much as he is as whether we believe him when he says that? That he died for our sins and because of that, we're not working from a position of death. We're not working from a position of being behind. We're actually way ahead in life. And that's why we can win. Whether it's with ourselves or with other people, this is the best thing we can do for them. One of the best things we can do, to go back to first principles. To check, are we obsessing over additions that don't support the first principles anymore? And are we helping them know Jesus? That's the important thing. Because if we know Jesus and they're knowing Jesus, we're gonna be fine. Yeah, so go back to the first principles, distinguish between the first principle and an addition. And always remember that Jesus is the firstest, first principle. Ah, I gotta go back to the camp. Lord, thank you for being here with us and taking care of us. We trust you and we ask you to guide us as we make decisions. Help us, Lord, to distinguish between what's essential and what is just an addition. And help us to remember that you are most essential of all. In Jesus' name, amen.